In this lecture, we're going to be talking a little bit more about exponential growth and decay. So just to um, recall what this um, model is about, um, we say that um, if a quantity grows or decays at, at a rate that's proportional to its size, then we have that y prime of t is equal to k times y prime of t, or we can write this as dy dt equals k times y of t, and the solutions to this are the functions y of t equal to the initial value of y times e to the kt. Okay. So in all our different examples, we're making use of this. Um, so far, we've seen how to use this for population growth. Um, and in this lecture, we're going to talk about how um, we can use this model in cases with radioactive decay, as well as um, with Newton's law of cooling. So for our first example, we're going to be looking at um, radioactive decay. So it is the case with um, a radioactive um, quantity that it will decay at a rate proportional to its size. So we are going to have a model, and here we're talking about mass, so we'll use m instead of um, p or y, is going to be equal to our initial amount times e to the kt, where since this is decay, it's going to turn out that k is going to be a negative value. So our first job is to find a formula for the mass remaining of this particular element, strontium-90, um, after 50, excuse me, after t days, when it started with um, 50 milligrams um, at the beginning. So we know that m of 0 is 50, okay? We're also told that um, this item has a half-life of 28 days, so a half-life means that after that amount of time, it will have decayed to half of the original amount. So if we start out with um, 50 milligrams at the beginning, then after 28 days we'll have 25 milligrams. So we have here m of t is equal to 50 e to the kt, and we need to use this information here to help us solve for k, um, just like we did with the population example in class. So I'm going to substitute here 28 for t, so I'm going to have m of 28 equals 50e to the 28k, and then replace m of 28 with 25, so we have 25 equals 50e to the 28k. Um, so we see that we'll end up with 1 half equals e to the 28k. Um, notice that I could have found um, k just with knowing that the half-life was this amount, because I could have just had um, m of 0, the, uh, let's see, um, yes, my, my initial amount, e to the 28k, oops, 28, um, yes, 28k, is equal to um, half of m0, and then I would have um, divided both sides by m0, and one did, would have ended up with here e to the 28k equals 1 half. Okay, so that half-life information is actually all we needed to, to get to this point. So now I'm just trying to solve for k, so I've got the natural log of 1 half equals the natural log of this right-hand side, so that's the natural log of e to the 28k. So um, we're going to undo this exponential function here, we'll just have 28k, and so k will be the natural log of 1 half over um, 28. Okay, so one way to write this to clearly see that it is a negative number, that we're dealing with decay, that our constant here is negative, is I can write this as the natural log of 2 to the negative 1 over 28, and then use my um, log rules to write this as negative the natural log of 2 over 28. Um, if I prefer. So I have now that m of t, um, my mass after t days of this particular um, radioactive element here, is equal to 50 e to the negative ln 2 over 28 t. Okay. So this is um, our first step in this problem, but now I'm going to want to answer a couple of different questions using this formula. Okay, so the first question, I've got our um, m of t repeated there. See, it's the same thing as what we had before. Um, we want to use this to find the mass remaining after 40 days. So this means I need to plug in 40 for t, so I'm looking for m of 40. So m of 40 is 50 e to the negative ln 2 over 28 times 40. Um, so for practice, we'll go ahead and just um, write this 
um, like we did in class, try to simplify this um, so that I can um, yeah, simplify this using, using our log rules. So I can write this as 50 e to the, well this is negative 1 over 28 ln of 2, okay. Um, this was times 40, so I can make that to the power of 40, so I know that when I have um, a product of um, exponents, that's the same thing as doing a power to a power. So continuing to simplify this a little bit, this is e to the natural log of 2 to the power negative 1 over 28 all to the 40th. So I can simplify this inside piece and have 52 to the negative 1 over 28 to the 40th, which can make this equal to 50 times 2 to the negative 40 over 28. So it just looks a little bit nicer. Um, and then we can simplify that a little bit more. We get 50 times 2 to the um, negative 10 over 7. Okay. And if I have my calculator here, I can then plug that in and see that the amount remaining would be about 18.575 milligrams. Okay. So if this had been the question, just find the mass remaining after 40 days, then step one would have been to find this equation using the information um, that we were given and then use that equation to actually find the amount after um, 40 days. Okay. So this is a standard type of question we might be asked is to um, find our quantity um, at time t and then find the amount after a certain amount of time has passed. Um, another type of question we might ask is sort of the um, opposite kind of problem. We might say how long does it take for us to reach a certain quantity? So here we're looking for time instead of trying to find the amount of um, the quantity after a particular period of time. Here we're saying we want to know how long it takes to reach this, this quantity. So here I need to substitute in 2 for m and solve for t. So I'm going to have 2 is equal to 50 e to the negative ln 2 over 28t and we need to solve for t. So I need to divide both sides here by 50. So we have 2 over 50 equals e to the negative ln 2 over 28t. Um, I can simplify that left hand side a little bit, just make that 1 over 25. And then to solve for t I'm going to have to take the log of both sides. I'm going to have the log of 1 over 25. The log of this right hand side here is just going to give me negative ln 2 over 28 times t. And then to solve for t, I just need to multiply both sides by 28 over the natural log of 2. So I'm going to have 28 natural log of 1 over 25 all over negative ln of 2 is equal to t. So if I wanted to simplify that just a little bit, I could write that as 28 the natural log of 25 to the negative 1. Remember that 1 over 25 is equal to 25 to the negative 1 power. Um, all over negative ln of 2, which is then equal to negative 28 natural log 25 over negative ln 2. So we can see that um, we do in fact have a po positive time here. Um, t is 28 ln 25 over ln 2 days. And if we had a calculator, we could go ahead and find that is about 130 0.03 days for um, our sample here to decay to a mass of 2 milligrams. Okay, so the kinds of things that we're using in these problems, um, we're using logs to help us solve for our values, um, we're using some log properties to help us simplify things, um, as well as um, using our formula here to set up our problem to begin with. So there's one other context that we're going to mention um, in this video lecture and that is connected to Newton's law of cooling. So um, what this law says is that the rate of cooling, so we have some kind of derivative, of an object is proportional to the temperature difference between the object and its surroundings provided that this difference is not too large. So we will be able to use this um, law in the examples that we're dealing with. And this law also applies to warming. So how this works is if we have t of t is our temperature of our object at time t and we use the notation ts to represent the temperature of the surroundings, then 
using the fact that um, the rate will be proportional to the temperature difference, we can say that dt dt, that's d capital T, um, with respect to time is equal to a constant time that temperature difference. To make this look like the model that we've been working with so far, we could let y of t be t of t minus ts, and notice that the second term is constant because it's just the, the temperature of the, the surroundings. You can think of it like the room temperature, um, which will be the, the case in our next example. Then notice that y prime of t would be just t prime of t, since the second term is constant. So that this um, equation here could then be written as dy dt equals k times y of t. So we see that we can use a model with y of t equal y of 0, e to the kt, like we've been doing so far, um, and then recognize that t of t is going to be equal to this y of t plus um, the surrounding temperature. So we want to see how we can use this, um, this formula, this process, um, in an example. So in this example, we're told that we have a cold drink that's taken out from a refrigerator. Um, and when it's first taken out of the refrigerator, its temperature is 5 degrees Celsius. So this is our initial temperature. T of 0 is 5 degrees Celsius. After 25 minutes in a 20 degrees Celsius room, its temperature has increased to 10 degrees Celsius. So after 25 minutes, we have a temperature of 10 degrees Celsius. The fact that the room is 20 degrees Celsius is telling us that's the surrounding temperature. That's our Ts. So what we're trying to find here, what is the temperature of the drink after t minutes, is T of t, the temperature after t minutes. So remember, we need to use our y of t is y of 0 e to the kt, where um, our y of t here is t of t minus ts. So in our situation, y of t is t of t minus 20. Okay. So I want to work with this here, so I'm going to need to know what y of 0 is, and then I'm going to have to use this information about t of 25 being 10 to help me find k. So notice that y of 0 would be t of 0 minus 20. So y of 0 is 5 minus 20, or negative 15 degrees Celsius. So I have y of t is negative 15 e to the kt. And then I need to use this information about t of 25 to find y of 25. So y of 25 would be t of 25 minus 20. So it would be 10 minus 20, or negative 10 degrees Celsius. Okay. So plugging in 25 minutes, I have y of 25 equals negative 15 e to the 25k. And now substituting y of 25 with negative 10, we have negative 10 equals negative 15 e to the 25k. So if we solve this for k, that'll help us get um, our equation for y of t. And then I can solve for t of t as that y of t plus the surrounding temperature. So if we divide both sides here by negative 15, we're going to have 2 thirds equals e to the 25k. So we'll have, we go use natural logs here, the natural log of 2 thirds equals 25k. So k is equal to 1 over 25, the natural log of 2 thirds. Okay. So to answer the question about the temperature at time t, we have t of t is y of t, which is our y of 0, negative 15, e to our k value, natural log of 2 thirds over 25 t, plus our surrounding temperature of 20 degrees Celsius. Remember that's because of this, so t of t equals our y of t plus ts. Okay. So now using this temperature function, we can answer various questions about the temperature. So notice what's different in this example is that I have to um, first find y of t and then substitute that back in 
um, for my temperature function. So this requires sort of two steps. We've got an exponential model for the difference, um, and then we can substitute that model and add our surrounding um, temperature value to get a function for um, the temperature at time t. Okay, so using this formula, so let me write that down our formula again, t of t is equal to this negative 15 e to the natural log of 2 thirds over 25 t plus 20, we can find the temperature of the drink after 50 minutes. So this means I have to plug in 50. So I've got t of 50 equals negative 15 e to the natural log of 2 thirds over 25 times 50 plus 20. So if I want to simplify this a little bit first, I have negative 15 e to the 2 ln of 2 thirds plus 20. It turns out I can just use my log rules a little bit and come pretty close to the, um, the answer without using my calculator. So I've got negative 15 e to the natural log of 2 thirds squared plus 20. So I'll be able to multiply negative 15 times 4 ninths. So I'm going to have negative 15 times 2 thirds squared because these will cancel here. So we'll have times 4 ninths plus 20. So divide some things by 3. So I've got negative 20 thirds over 3 plus 20. So I'm going to be adding 60 thirds um, and negative 20 thirds. So I'm going to have 40 thirds degrees Celsius, which is about 13.3 degrees Celsius. So after 50 minutes, our soda that started out at 5 degrees Celsius will have warmed up to about 13.3 degrees Celsius in a room where the, the ambient temperature is 20 degrees. Okay. So one last question that we might want to answer about this, um, instead of finding the um, excuse me, temperature after a certain amount of time, we might want to find how long it would take for the soda that started at 5 degrees Celsius to warm up to 15 degrees Celsius. So just to sort of check our answer, um, we would expect that this time should be greater than 50 minutes because after 50 minutes it's already warmed up to 13.3, so it seems like it should take a little bit longer for it to get up to 15 degrees Celsius. So that's just to make sure our answer makes sense check. So here, again, I need to remember what my formula is. So we've got T of T is equal to our negative 15 E to the natural log of 2 thirds t over 25 plus 20. And I want, I want to know when, the time, when the temperature will be 15 degrees Celsius. So I'm going to set 15 equal to this left hand side. So we've got 15 is equal to negative 15 e to the natural log of 2 thirds over 25t plus 20. So we subtract negative 20 from both sides. So we have negative 5 equals negative 15 e to the natural log of 2 thirds over 25t divide both sides by negative 15. So we've got 1 third equals e to the natural log of 2 thirds over 25t. So now I need to use logs to try to solve for t. So I'm going to have the log of 1 third equals the log of this right hand side. So that'll be the natural log of 2 thirds over 25t. Okay, and so then we just need to multiply both sides by 25 over the natural log of 2 thirds. So we're going to have t is 25 times the natural log of 1 third all over the natural log of 2 thirds. And that comes out to about 67.7 minutes. So it agrees with what we expected um, to get for our answer. Okay, so this should help you with um, some of the homework problems you're going to have to do. We're going to look at a couple more examples in class and let me know if you have any questions.